Okay, so if you're struggling on the quiz a little bit and need a little push in the right direction, that's what this video is for. So if you're looking at something that's in y equals mx plus b form, okay, this right here is called the y-intercept. That is where you should be starting on the y-axis in terms of input-output, okay? So when we're, whenever we are thinking about the other number, this right here is called the slope. And we're going to use that value to rise over run whatever fraction you have for that slope value. So, for example, if you had something like three fifths, your starting point, you go up three and over five. Okay. So, use that or use y equals in the calculator to see what that graph looks like. These are a little more intimidating because you have to solve for x. Sorry, solve for y. So you're gonna start by moving x, negative 5x, or subtract 5x to the other side. These are not like terms. And you end up getting 4y equals negative 5x minus 16. Let's divide everything by four. And now that tells me what my first line should be. So you can either graph that in y equals and get that graph going. Or you can just start with that y-intercept value that we talked about a minute ago and then use that slope to find the next point. Now I'm going to let you try to do the other one in terms of solving for y so that you can graph that correctly. You're looking for the point where they cross. All right, substitution. Substitution is the idea that you're trying to plug it in to each other. You're trying to somehow combine the two equations. And if you know what y is from the first one, you can plug that in to the second one. So uh, this is what you should do to get started on problem like number three. Try to get x, solve for x, and then plug that value back in to calculate what y would be. Now substitution, uh, when one's in standard form and the other one's in y equals mx plus b form, uh, takes a little more work. 2x plus 5y equals negative 4. But we're not going to use y, we're going to use what y equals. We're going to plug in x minus 12. So then distribute, solve for x, and again, just like in the first one here, we're going to plug that back in and calculate what y is. Okay, number six, when you're talking about elimination, elimination is the idea that you're trying to add the two equations together to cancel out one of the variables. So for example, if this one's ready to go, it's got negative 7 and positive 7. So if you were to add those together, they would eliminate. Okay, so add the rest of them together and you'll figure out what x equals, plug that back in and get what y equals. Now for something like number six, they don't cancel because nothing matches. So if I'm looking right here and I have like a positive 10y and a negative 5y, you can use multiplication to make them have that idea that they're opposite, one be positive and one be negative of the same number. So I'll give you a hint, you need to multiply this second equation by a number that'll turn this middle value, negative five, into negative 10. So multiply this whole equation by something that would make negative 10 and then add the two together, okay? So as we start looking at ones that aren't um, multiple choice, you need to start thinking along those lines that I was just talking about. How can we make some of these match and they need to be opposite in sign? So for example, if I see that this is 14, I really need to multiply something that makes this second equation a negative 14y. So let's multiply everything by negative two. Once you multiply everything by negative two, everything has to be multiplied. Then rewrite the other one down here and add the two equations together, okay? So let's talk about uh, graphing inequalities. You have several ideas. You're either using a dash line or you use a solid line. It just depends on if there's an or equal or not. And then you have to understand the idea of greater than would be shading up. Or if you had less than, you're shading down below the line that you graph. Okay, so hopefully that helps rem uh, remind you of some ideas. The difference of two numbers is 20, the sum is 14. Find the numbers and show your work. So you gotta know that difference means subtraction, and you gotta know that sum means add. So you gotta set these two equations up based on what it's talking about. The difference of two numbers is 20, the sum of two numbers is 14, and then you can use elimination 
and add them together to cancel out and get uh, X equals and Y equals. A little harder, tickets to a concert sell $12 for a student, $15 for an adult, and we want to really connect those values with the value here that is money. So all of those should go into one equation that would calculate based on how many student tickets they sell, how many adult tickets they sell, what the prices are for each of those, how that's going to come out to be 4140. You also know there's a total, another word for a total is sum or add. The two values of the variables, x and y, they add to be a total of 300. So that should help you kind of get started with your elimination. If something's a solution, that means X and Y should plug in and make everything work. So for example, if you said X is one and Y is two, X plus Y would equal three. That would make it true. But if in the second one it says two X plus Y equals 100 and 101 or something like that, well one times two is two and you add the other value, that gives you four, not 101. So it has to work for both of uh, equations for it to solve the system okay all right so these are special lines I'm trying to see if you know that uh, I'm not really wanting to talk about that in this video uh, standard form very similar to the very first set of problems you need to solve for y you need to get x to the other side in order to have y equals in order to graph it okay Something like this takes a little more work because when you subtract 4x, you don't get y equals, you get negative 5y equals, and then you have to do one more step and divide everything. Okay, so go ahead and graph that, and hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Okay, slope formula is the idea of rise over run if you're looking at the graph. So you can try to throw that into the fraction. How much does it rise? How much does it run? Try to use the calculator if you need to, to verify what these special cases are. So the slope formula is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So I want you to try that formula here, labeling each one as x and y points, and then using the formula, simplify your answer. Similar to the question that's asking you about a solution, you can verify which of these A, B, C, D question uh, answers would uh, solve this elimination because you can simply plug in these values to see which one makes the most sense that's going to calculate both of these correctly. So small hint there. All right, 23 and 24, really just trying to keep uh, you solving as much as possible because that's got to be something that you're really good at by the time you get to geometry. Probably start here, 12b plus 6 minus 7, and then I want you to take it all the way to the equals. Okay? This video is really just meant to kind of give you a push in the right direction, not do the problem for you. So uh, this one I need to distribute here to start off, giving you 10x minus 4, and then I rewrite the rest of it, combine like terms, try to put stuff together, and try to get x equals to the problem. Okay, these are called absolute value graphs. Absolute value means you should expect a V-shaped graph. Now the idea of input, output, it takes a little more work. But you can also use the calculator if you know where absolute value is in the uh, TI-84. So if I say uh, X plus one minus four, I can build a table and say, okay, well, where is X and Y? Let's make up a value. So if I plug in zero, zero plus one makes one. The absolute value of one is one. And if you subtract four, you get negative three. So now you've plugged in zero, you got negative three, you can get a point going. Now that's obviously gonna take a while. You need to understand the idea of HK. HK is the idea of how these shift left and right or how these shift up and down or if they are reflected, which means that V is not facing up, it's facing down. Okay, so think about those things. I'll show you real quick in the calculator where you can graph these. If you go to Y equals, you can hit the math button. You do have to scroll over one time to, to see ABS, and then you can plug in whatever you want. Okay, I'll just make up a random problem plus six, minus five, and if you notice, 
if it's a plus six, it went left six, and then it went down five for its first point, and then went up one over one in both directions. Now let's see what would happen if in the very beginning you had a negative value. If you put a negative in the front of that absolute value, absolute value can't be negative unless you multiply it by a negative. And so it still shifts the way that we're talking about left six and down five. However, now it's jutting down because it's been reflected. Hopefully this video has helped you and you can use it to kind of get yourself going on the quiz. Good luck and I hope this helps.